Hey guys, I'm just uh, coming on a few minutes early just to make certain everything's working and you can let me know if you see it. I'm going to uh, come in on a computer as well just so I can hopefully catch us here too. Uh, so knock yourselves out for about three or four minutes, okay? Because I'm not yet seeing comments there. Let's see. Oh, but I see something here. Catch us here too. Okay, I'm going to turn down this volume. Or we'll hear the backdrop. Okay, just a second. There we go. That looks like it's fine-ish. Let's back that up a bit more so that you can... Over here, how's that? You can see everything here, you can see everything here. Okay, good. Give it a couple minutes, get yourself a cup of coffee, tea, something yummy, and I think it's all, I think it's all just fine. Okay. I'm gonna go like this while we're waiting. See if you can see that. And No, it's not a guitar. It's an elastic band holding this in place just to make certain you don't fall. Because that would be tragic if you fell. Okay. Oh, now, somebody, wait a second now. Somebody showed me a way. Is it the star that then turns the camera the right way? If somebody knows what that it's not there uh i could there huh we did it okay so now it's looking the right way right well it is here wait a minute it's not for you so no that's not doing it is that doing it let me refresh this for just oh that did it okay so now you see it the way it should be seen, and I see it reverse. That's great. Okay. That's all that I really wanted us to do. Okay. So, I'm going to start and say hi. So, welcome on. This is so great. Uh, Stacy and Tim and everybody else who's a part of getting this stuff together and uh, all the presenters. Pretty awesome that we're able to do this, huh? Um... Be safe beyond anything. Listen to governments that say stay in. Those of our governments that say stay in. Um, you know, thank all the essential workers that are out there risking health. Okay, so I'm going to start by just showing you a bunch of different examples of some mugs that I make and the handles that go on some of those. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of different mugs and I thought I would put some handles on those and if we have some time, depending on the temperature in the room, so to speak, uh, I threw, just very quickly, I threw this just before uh, coming on and dried it with a bit of a heat gun. This was an added piece because this is actually a salt shaker. Now there's no hole for the salt to come out. Did I say there was no hole? There is a hole, but it's here. So I thought that I would show you guys how I make these. Um, they're really neat, certainly on a tabletop for when you ask, you know, can you please pass this here? And someone goes, if I knew where it was, I'd pass it. But it kind of doesn't look like one, right? So the way that, that this works is you pour the salt or the sugar and cinnamon or whatever spice in here. 
and then there's a well so there's a funnel shape inside a conical shape that's in here I throw that first and then I throw the rest of the piece around it and what you do you pour the salt in it's gonna sit in this well on your table on a table and then all you got to do is you shake this thing and the salt is going to hit the top because this is enclosed and it's going to come back out that hole and it it's it's a quite a small hole and it's really neat. so we will uh mine off and have a little curly cue on top or something interesting you can do a different kind of a handle again this was a you can either throw this if you have enough clay or I tend to flatten it off a bit and then I add a hand built version of a handle or in this case I just threw a knob on top of it also so we'll see if we have time for that okay let me know if you want to know how to make that and then we'll we'll make time okay so that's gonna go sit over here for now so let's just start by saying that I used to for 15 years I don't know how many years make hand built handles because I never took the time to really pay attention and practice making a nice handle so I didn't feel like it was settling I just felt like oh I don't have time to really learn how to make nice handles because I liked handles but I didn't know how to do them nicely so they always came out thin and scraggly or edgy or huge or too small or they just it just didn't work out nicely right so here's an example of an old mug of mine with the handles that I used to make so a handle that kind of looked like that and it completely fine comfortable it wasn't pulled right so and it had some texture to it sometimes and I'll show you how I did that so there's nothing wrong with not pulling your handle here's another handle that's not pulled and it's kind of sweet it looks just fine um, so I'll, I'll show you how to do those two because I don't want anybody who doesn't pull handles to think that they're not going to have a lovely handle because you can have a beautiful handle it doesn't have to be pulled I now find that the handle making part of the mug is for me one of the um, one of the more enjoyable parts of the completion of the mug I love the way it looks with a really nice handle I don't like thin little handles I like buffy kind of handles so let me just show you quickly a bunch of mugs and the handles and where they sit and then we'll go into making them okay so I will start by showing you that kind of a handle so that is just put on it's pulled from the mug so I don't pull the handle first and let it lay out I pull it from the mug so I a component pull it and then I'll show you a couple of ways that I handle that I handle a couple of ways that I deal with the transition onto the mug itself so that's a kind of handle that I can make okay and again these are pulled from the actual pot okay so a nice fat connection here and I haven't added any clay to that that's just a nice fat connection there and then I add this little extra bit down here because I kind of like for the visual weight to reflect both sides being similar okay so that's another mug and I just pull this with that spine and I'll show you how I do that okay. so there, there, there. Um, that's another one just pulled it a little bit of a spine the the deal with a handle for me is I want it to be ovaled slightly so it feels really comfortable in your hand if it's too thin it doesn't feel nice and I don't have one that's too thin here but if it's too thin it just doesn't feel good right you want it to to fill up some span on your finger so that's another guy and again just a little doodad back here I'll sometimes put them inside here as well show you that after uh, sometimes I'll add some decorative 
slip trail to the top and to the bottom. And that just gives it a bit of fulcrum, a bit of a, of leverage. And when making handles, there's a couple things to be thinking about, right? You want to think about the fact that it's a, it's a lever this way. It's also something you're going to hold the weight of this way. So the bottom part has to be comfortable. When I put these little guys on the bottom, and I don't do them on all of them, but I tend to do them on a lot because it's become a little signature-ish, and I happen to think it's really comfortable. And this is interesting because you can either put your finger against it and you're pushing against that and that's giving you some leverage or you can put it underneath and that's a different way to hold it too. So it's kind of, you know, just kind of neat. Um, okay, so I am really interesting. So on my phone, I'm just gonna talk out loud for a second. I'm not seeing, the comments have kind of stopped um, after people saying they're watching, but on the computer, I'm seeing a bunch of comments. So what I'll do is I'm going to just keep yakking through. Um, and then we'll get to comments and such after. So write your comments down or keep them or remember them or copy it so that you can paste it again when we're ready to talk about comments. If that works for you, that's okay. Otherwise, I'll look over here and that's going to kind of be weird for you guys, right? Okay. Anyways, another piece. Um, hand built, little hand built handle again, and we'll we'll do one of those, okay? So hi to everybody. Thank you so much for coming in, and for like for being potters because we are just the most phenomenal, phenomenal group of people together. What a strong community. So thank you for including me in, in this community. Oh, I'll get all flushy and stuff. Okay, this one here. I once watched, I think it was Pete Pinnell who gave a talk about mugs and handles. And he said, pay attention to how people lift up a mug. Some women for the most part, he said, and that was kind of interesting, said, we hold our mugs this way with our hand crossed over here. And that's a different weight that you then feel. He said, guys, hold it this way in front. So he said to me, he didn't say to me. Well, he said it to me because I was watching. He said, ask somebody to hold a mug without a mug being there and see what they do. So I did that little experiment and I found that he was actually right. That a lot of guys went like this, kind of like a, you know, off of their hip and just held it here. And a lot of women did this. And some women would do three fingers, some women would do one finger. Some people do this. I'm a this kind of a handle. I tend to do that a lot. I stick two fingers in. That's what I often do. Um, when you're making your mug, you want to think about where the where it's going to feel good in terms of that the weight, right? I tend to make some huge mugs and I make some smaller mugs. When you have a mug that's really large, you really want to to consider how wide the handle has to be. You want to be able to have space for your fingers to get in and not touch the pot so you don't burn yourself. But you don't want it to be so large that here's your mug out here and it's too heavy to hold because you just, it'll become a little planter. Um, it won't be a mug. People won't want to use it, I think. Okay, so there are some more that's a really big mug. Again, I gave myself enough of a span at the bottom that I can stick a pinky under there to help hold it. I could also put all four in. And this guy here is just, just giving me a little extra leverage. I keep saying that word leverage, but that's kind of what I'm saying. Okay. So I'm, I am seeing some of the comments, but hold them for just a second. Oh, no, I'll stop for a second. I'll, I'll scroll through some of these. I'll talk about them, and then we'll get into making some, okay? There's a another little cancer mug. Okay, so let me just scroll back for a second, guys. Uh, is that how I do it here? Ooh. Okay. And if I miss your comment, please forgive me. 
Um, it's so interesting. On the phone, it just says a certain person is watching, but I'm not seeing any comment comments. I don't want to go finish. That would not be right. There? No? Okay. We'll just do this one here. Okay, so I did see... Can I push the mirror button one more time, if I don't mind, please? It's reset to original. Is it still? Are you guys seeing it? Well, I'm, I'm seeing it okay. Oh, no. It's reset. It's reset to original. So it is. Okay, let's push that. And let's do that. And let's... Nope, we don't want to do that. How's that? Uh, if I refresh this... Oh... Can anybody tell me if that's okay? Oh, I don't want to waste time doing this. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, let's find this. Let's see if it worked. Uh, I don't know if it did. It's backwards again. Oh, why? Okay, we'll do that. We'll see if that works. And then we'll just leave it alone. And if, it, if it's wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, but there we go. Okay. Oh, it looks like it's right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, someone asked about the glazes, right? So, yes, Barbara, I can see people are saying hi. Okay. But I can't see it on my phone. It's so wild. Okay. So, I do a variety of glazes. Um, I do a fair amount of slip trailing. Uh, slip trailing is done in either the same clay body or a slip trail slip that I use. Really easy, basic slip. I'll give you guys the recipe if you want. You can screenshot it. Um, do I have any Cinderella Coach mugs? You saw some Cinderella Coach mugs. So this here is a glaze that I have formulated and it looks very different in a slow cool than in a fast cool. Um, the same glaze looks very, very different on a uh, clay with a little bit of iron in it versus a fairly white Clay or more of a porcelainous kind of a clay. Um, and glazes like these have about eight or nine glazes that have been sprayed. Oops, eight or nine glazes that I spray on. And each batch is a little bit different. I don't do them in the same order. Um, I just kind of start and I do way more than I probably should because they take me for flipping ever, but I kind of love the way they look. They very much are oceany for me. So that's, that's what these guys are. Okay. Enough about all that. Should we just get started now? Should we just make, should we just make some handles happen? We can make some handles happen. Okay. So I used to roll out a coil and then that coil would become a, um, a carrot and I would pull from the carrot, that kind of thing. Now what I do is I, uh, oh, I was going to show you these guys too. So these are just waiting. These are drying now. So sometimes I'll just put also some slip trail marks and that again, it just is, it's really lovely. It's really tactile. Uh, lots of people kind of know that's what I do now. So it's, it's kind of a nice little, oh, it's a Cory mug and that feels kind of sweet for me. Um, but there's something I had a friend who had very severe rheumatoid arthritis. I have a friend. And I was making sizable mugs. And she said, Corey, I can't have a big mug. I need a small mug. I'm from Europe. I like little mugs. And I, I need them to be tactile. So I started a place for other parts of your hand to visit. So there was some tactileness and something that she could hold on to. And I would also start adding some things onto the um, handle. Again, one, because it's a really lovely experience. And two, because it, it does gives you, give you a little bit more grip. So those are my accessibility mugs. Ones like that, I just add that piece on and smooth it down. Just like that. Again, it just, it just gives you a little bit of something for your hand to hang on to. I'm, oh, thank you for saying that, everybody. You're, you're lovely. Okay. Oh, and if the glaze, if it's getting interrupted, I don't know what to do about that, except to say that likely the replay will be completely fine. 
sometimes I know that happens in general. So, okay, here we go. Not sad. Gosh, this girl can talk. Again, those little dots or little lines. Okay. So, I take, I'm gonna show you this here. Um, just a bag of clay, right? And I just take a wad out, okay? So I just have a, a wad of clay. I make like, it's probably bigger than a golf ball. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. I guess I could weigh it for you if you wanted to know. It's a feel for me. So that's kind of where I am here. Like that. Fits in my hand. I have small hands, okay? The pieces and the things that I tend to keep handy are a couple of paint brushes that are small and a little stiff. Little stiff. It's a little stiff. They're soft but stiff. Sometimes a toothbrush, but not usually. Most often, a pin tool or a serrated, oops, or a serrated rib and a pin tool. Um, okay. Now, if the comments are in your way, you know you can swipe, right? So that's going to be a big one. So let's, I have a couple different shaped mugs here. I have that kind and this kind. So let's do, this looks to me like it would be good for this size, because that's a, that's a lot. This is a shorter mug, that's going to be too much for that one. And it doesn't matter if it's extra, it just hangs out for a while. Okay. These are just sitting here waiting. So, I take my circle of clay, and this is kind of my way of wedging it, right? I'll go back and forth and just... Just get it to be soft and conditioned. Then I just kind of go back and forth a bit, but I don't go all the way. So I'm making it flat, just like that, okay? If I have little bits that are overlapping like this, it's here that I'm going to just smooth those out a little bit. Okay. Now I'll pat it down a bit. I'm going to hold the end like an oval, and here I'm going to widen this, which is the connection point. So I want it to be wider. Oh, I can see comments on here now. How nice. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make that attachment fat. I want it to be nice and juicy. So I'm going to hold it between my hands, make an oval here, and now I'm going to pat it down. Often I'll do it with this part of my hand because it just widens it nicely. And I want to make kind of a pillow on this side here, like all, all around this. I want it to billow out a little bit, pillow, billow. So again, I'll hold this and I'm just going to press it from the inside into that fat part of my fingers. Can you see what I've done here? Okay. So there you can see, oh, there you can see it's spread it a little bit, right? So I don't want it to be a thin lip here, if you want to call it a lip, but I, I do want it to be spread. Now again there, I'm going to smooth that little crease out because I don't want it to be a point of, um, breaking, ripping, tearing. What's the word? Nah. Cracking, that's the word. Oh my God, Corey. Okay, so now I want to make this the shape that I want it to look like on the actual mug, okay? So I'm gonna just get that into a shape that I like. That's pretty okay for me. I want to make it fairly symmetrical, symmetrical, fairly even, uh, balanced from the left to the right side. Kind of like that, okay? Now I start taking this and I pinch it. 
and I pinch with a spine that's going to get left. And this is so, this angle in there, that triangle that I'm forming, is going to deal with the right side. This triangle in here is going to deal with the left side. Okay? So I'm pressing. And as I'm pressing in, this is moving up. The whole shaft is moving up. Can you kind of see that it's moving up? Sure, my fingers are moving down, but it's moving up. Once I go down once, I then take my fingers and I'm going to gently soften that spine. Can you see the profile there? Okay. So I just keep softening that down just a little bit. I'm going to do it again. So what I'm really doing here is I'm just getting it started, right? As opposed to pulling the whole thing, I'm just, I'm just giving it a suggestion of where I want it to be. So now that's what's happened. It's nice and gentle on the corners or on the sides, and it's a little wider here, like a football or an egg or an oval. Okay. Now the next part's kind of interesting. Many people use slip. Many people use water. I tend to use magic water. And everybody take a screenshot of that. Who wants a screenshot of it? So it is a gallon of water to nine and a half grams of sodium silicate and three grams of soda ash. Okay. This charges the molecules in a way that they want to stick together. So th there used to be a time when I never scored. I just used the slip. And we're going to do an experiment right now so that you can see somebody else do it and you can decide. Lately, for some reason, I don't know, I've gotten into scoring. But I still use the magic water. Um, it softens the clay a little bit, so you have to be a little bit mindful of that because um, you don't want to put too much on because it will soften the attachment and you don't really want that either. Okay, so here I go. Nice. I'm going to open it up. I usually have two brushes going, one that I use in the sodium silicate and one that I have in a bucket of water here. Okay, And that's so that I don't add water so much to where I don't want the sodium silicate and I don't want the sodium silicate to where I want to add the water. Okay. So, well, you know what? No, that's okay. There, we're going to use this one. So, this, I normally put my, my finger dents on the sides somewhere. This time, I wanted to see what would happen if I moved my lug right here. So what I'm going to do also as a little bit of a test is let me get this guy because if not testing now when? Okay I'm going to take my mug and I'm going to run a seam a little crease right here okay so I'm going to put it toward the edge right there I'm going to take this guy you could take anything you could take a rib you could take a straight edge, doesn't matter. This is just what's handy for me. And it has a nice soft edge here. A friend of mine, a student of mine, who's also a woodworker, made that for me. Okay, so I'm going to just run this up. Let's see if I can do this with you guys looking at me. Here, about there. Okay, so I am just softly... doing that. Okay, so now my hand is really going to fit in nicely there because that bulb that I have over here, I'm not going to have to deal with it because it's flatter there. I could even flatten that a little bit. No, I'm going to leave that there. That'll be nice to attach to, I think. Right there. As she says that, I'm just going to go a little bit more. And I'm going to put my hand inside and just run that right up. There. Yeah? We like? Does that work? Cool! Okay. 
So let's see if we can get away with this one without any scoring. This is hard leather hard right now. They've been sitting under um, wraps for a little while. This is gonna be my, this is gonna be my uh, sodium silicate magic water guy. So I'm gonna put it just in the center and I'm gonna hold this upside down a bit because I don't want it to run, okay? I want it to run backwards. Why? Because it gets soft, right? Okay. So I'll just put it on that. And I'm going to put it where I want to join. Is this still in view? Dee! Okay. So I'm going to gently put it where I want to join it. And I'm going to put a little bit down here as well. But I'm not going to put any scoring. I'm not going to scratch it at all. So what I am going to do, however, is once this is on, I'm going to twist it. Okay? And I'm going to really compress it. Support it from the inside. Twist, twist. Oh, you, I wish you could have heard what I just heard. It went And now I'm going to press it in. And I'm going to press with my right thumb on the right-hand side. I'm going to support this just on my chest. I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to do it similarly so that both sides are sort of addressed in a similar way. And then I can clean all, anything up that I want to clean up afterwards. But let's just do this. So now that it's on, it's, it's, it's on there nicely. I'm just going to run my finger around this. And I'm going to hold this up so you guys can all see what that looks like. Can you see that now? Like that's, that's nice and on. That's juicy and on. Okay. It's. I don't think that's going anywhere. Let's see. Okay. So now I'm going to put my left hand inside like that. This is still a little soft. It's not quite hard leather hard. I thought that it was, but it, it's moving a bit. So I'm going to take some water. There's a bucket of water right here. Oh, you can't see that. Bucket of water. Here we go. Okay. Magic water is a deflocculant, yes. Uh, it does the same kind of a deal. Okay, so now, this is my hand, right? I'm going to pull, and I'm going to pull, and I'm going to pull, and I'm going to pull. And I'm going to turn this as well, okay? This is that corner here, addresses one side, while this addresses the other. But those aren't the same. One's more round, one's more pointy. So I'm going to turn my, my pot as well, okay? Um, and that will help to address both sides evenly. I tend to also use this part of my thumb. This, uh, it's almost just before the bone, that knuckle. And it dances on both sides. That's what's going to create my spine, okay? So that's what's happening so far. Can you see that spine? Okay. So I'm just going to, and then I go over the spine sometimes too if needs be. I'm going to just wrap my hands up and up. I don't know that, I'm going to turn completely around, okay, and see if you can see this. Address the, the side of the attachment if you need to. Is that working? Does that? I'll, I'll, maybe two people say yes or no. Aw, thanks, Stace. Okay. So here I want to just sweeten that up because it was bulging out a bit. So take the time. Sweeten it up. And I'm just pulling. Oh, got an air bubble in there. Turn it around, do the same thing. I'll also sometimes use this sort of action. This way, and this way, and this way. Okay. But did you notice there was no scratching, no, no scoring? So what no scoring can also do 
is it, I think it can help alleviate some possible fissures that can happen. I don't know. I do both. Like, what do I know? I do both. It's like a, a mood thing for me, I think. Okay. The other thing, remember, is you want the handle to feel really nice and comfortable, which means you don't want it to be too, too thin. So that's kind of a nice thickness, I think, for the handle for me. Okay. Sometimes the handle will sway one way or the other. So address it right before you go and attach it. Just address it. I'm going to take my thumb and just run it down a little bit on both sides because I want that spine to be pronounced and that'll help pronounce it and then smooth down those sides. So that's what we have going on now. Okay. Um, the spine happens in the pulling. The earlier spine that I sort of create is just a bit of a, a, a telling of the clay lug that I want it to be oval. Okay, but it's, it is my thumb that's helping to create that spine. Okay, and it's on both sides really. So there's a little bit of a wow there and a little bit of a wow on that side. Okay, at this point you have a choice. You can just turn your pot over uh, and let it just hang out, just like that. So I'll often do this, and I'll just put it on the edge of my table, which is what I'm going to do right now, and then we'll come back to them. We'll do about two or three of them, and then we'll come back, okay? Because we have time. Okay, there you go. It's just sitting here. It just, it's just having a little sit down. It's just like, it's just sitting. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do a different shape this time, okay? Let's do this shape. So this one, I have a little dent here. I call it a belly button. And it's kind of a very special thing because if it faces the person drinking, they have a very special little personal moment, you know? Hmm, it's a little personal moment. And then this gets to look at everybody else, my little mark. If it's the other way around, then it's also just nice to have a little doodad to touch. And these just give a nice place for the glaze to break or to change. And again, it's tactile. Okay. So in this case, I'm not going to put the handle here, although it would be really nice if I did, because that would be a nice place for it to be in. But I am going to do it on the side here so that a, the person drinking from the mug can, can fondle. Can, they can fondle these little bits. Okay, so, and the next one we'll do, a, a, I'll show you a hand, I'll, I'll show you the hand built one now, okay? Let's do a little hand built guy. Okay, so a hand, I'm gonna move the water out of the way. I'll move that out of the way. Okay, so. That's too much. Let's take some of that off. And it really is kind of a feel thing. Okay, I'm going to make a coil at this point. And just, and you know when you're making a coil, run your hand the full gamut, the full distance. If you're having a hard time with coils and they're getting flat on one side or the other, then it's likely because you're not going you're going from here to here to here to here, as opposed to here and here, and spreading and spreading and spreading this way and spreading this way and spreading this way. Okay, can you see me doing this here? Okay. So here we go. There's my coil. And I'm gonna make one part of the coil smaller by having an angle down and just running my hands on that part of the coil. So now I've gotten myself a little carroty, sure, carroty thing. Okay, a couple different different options here. You can take, this is shelf liner. You can get it at the dollar store. And it's a, 
washable, reusable. You can also, anytime you find some corrugated cardboard, keep it. Comes in different sizes. So very quickly, let's use the corrugated for a second. So watch what happens here. I'm putting the corrugated on a bit of an angle and I'm gonna run this coil against it with a, with a bit of pressure. And that's what you get. Sweet! Okay, so the magic water is used in place of slip or water to make attachments. Okay, now I'm going to drop it. And let's give it a, a cut. Can you see where I'm cutting here? I'm gonna, I think I'll cut about here. If I cut on an angle this way, well, I'll start it here. If I cut on an angle beveled out, then that's gonna tell the clay that I wanna put the attachment at the bevel, like that, and then slowly, just gently, 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 curve that over. And so that's the handle there, right? Ooh, that's the handle. If I put a straight edge here, then this part isn't gonna be against the clay, but the straight edge will be. So let's, let's do that and you'll see the difference there. So, for example, you know, that's one way to do it. Oh, it's a bit too long, so I have to see where that would be. Let's do it the other way, where I'm just going to cut it straight. So cutting it straighter would give me a straight, straight on with the pot, and then I would curve it. Okay, two different looks. I'm gonna do a straight on, but I'm first gonna take this and I'm going to, before it gets on my pot, I'm gonna give it a little thumb dinghy. Now, I don't happen to personally like um, a, a wad on top that gives you a, a thumb imprint, so to speak, but I don't seem to mind a thumb imprint in the actual body of the clay. So, can you see what I'm doing here? Uh, maybe you can hear. Comments aren't there. So I'm just going to push my thumb down a little bit. Not a lot. Just like that. Just kind of like that. Okay? Here's my attachment. I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to widen it up, okay? So you can pull handles from the cup. I'll do another one. It's... I began this discussion talking about the fact that I made handles like this for years because I just never took the time. And by time, I mean time. Like, it was one day and I said to myself, that's it, Corey. You just have to put in the time and learn how to make yourself a nice pulled handle. So I made, I don't know, 25 or 30 mugs. And on each mug, I pulled four handles. So each mug had four handles pulled out of it. I wasn't planning on keeping the mugs. I was planning on learning how to make a gosh darn handle. Okay? So I urge you, I implore you, if you want to make handles that are pulled from the mug, do it. Make the time and do it. Okay, so this time I'm going to scratch and score. You can do both. So when I scratch and score though, I leave a ridge that I don't score all the way out of. Again, for the same reason, I don't want to um, give the clay a chance to fissure. So I'm gonna make a little gauge for myself. Like that, yep, like that. And now I'm gonna scratch in that, okay? Scratch, 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 scratch. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of our magic water. And you can use slip, you can use just water, you can use splurge or splooge or scrooge or snooge. What is it? A little bit of maple syrup and or corn syrup and 
slip, like clay. People do that too. Okay. So here we are. Let's do it this way. I'm going to drop this where I want it to be, which is going to be here. Give it a little rock. Tells me where to score. So I'm going to score that one. Okay. And I tend to take my tool, if I'm going to use a tool, and just kind of make a direct line down the center. And that just gives me a sense of where I have to do it. Okay. Straight down. Again, put a bit more. And I put it wider than the what I've just scored. This is going to be longer than I need, I know that, but I'm going to I'm going to add a little bit more here. And just make certain that you have enough of the magic water around the pot so it'll stick even where you haven't scored it. Put it on, squish it down, and push it in. And push and push, just kind of gently. And then I tend to give it a couple seconds before I do anything to it. Now, I'm not going to be pulling it, but if I was pulling it, that's what I would do. What I'd also do here, so just address all of those edges. This is where that other brush comes in, okay? I do add a little bit of water to it. Then I brush it out so that it's fairly flat, and I just go around the edges. And that just helps to compress and smooth those edges down. Now, if you're somebody who likes not to show process lines, you can smooth the whole thing in. You don't need to make the separation or the delineation from where the handle attaches to the actual pot. Kind of like that. I happen to, to like to see the process lines. Okay, so now, let's see what we're gonna do here. I'm just gonna find out where I like it, and that looks pretty good to me, and Just gently rock my finger on that. Now, if you have excess clay here, you can just rip it off. Or you can fold it under. Or you can do whatever you like. <laughs> I'm just going to rip that off like that, like so. And then just gently smooth that down. There. So that is the beginning. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up here a bit. So I'm going to take my finger, turn it upside down in this case, and just smooth, add a bit of moisture to that, and work the clay to tell it that I, I want it to move a little bit. Because it's a hand-built flat piece there, I want that curve in here to be really sweet. I don't want it to be flat. So this is sort of the curve that I'm talking about in here. So just get your finger to worry that or work that. And I'm just, just a small little bit of water on my finger. Shake it off, add it in, and work that. So you don't have to pull handles. You can make nice handles that aren't pulled. There we go. Now, what I would do with this is I would take another kind of a tool or maybe even, even a brush. And this is probably like the end of a... If you had a paintbrush or a knitting needle, you could use something like that. I don't know where I got this. It's a little green plastic gizmo. And I would just retool these little lines to compress them because this clay got just a little bit dry as I was working it 
So that just compresses that in a bit. Okay, take a tiny bit of water and just, again, just work that a little bit. Just so it's not going to be prone to cracking there. Okay, so I've done one hand built and one, one pulled. Oh, geez, and we have 15 minutes left. Okay, so here's my question to you. And I'm just going to, because this wasn't as moist as the other one, I'm just going to work that in. Um, would you like me to make do another handle, another pull handle, or several? I can do them in that. Or would you like, um, yeah, I'll often put the mugs upside down um, and under wraps. Um, I might even take a little guy like this. Make a little, uh, little coil and go from the small to the large and just coil that around like that. Flatten, uh, can you see this? Flatten the edge. Salt, salt, okay. And now I'm gonna stick that, okay, just in the bottom. So I'm just gonna quickly do this and then we'll do the salt cellar, okay. Add a little bit of moisture there, or I could have done it with the magic water, but oh, and let's get a little, little thing there. And there. So now I have this little gizmo in there. Either way. This might actually be one of the mugs that I would like to put a very faint little coil. So I would take a coil, very small one, and I'm going to squish it so I have a triangular point to that. Can you see what I've just done? Ah, see? So it's flat on one side and it's triangular on the other. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of water in here. So I just painted water in there. I'm going to put the angle inside. See what I've done there? Uh, in there. And then I'm going to take, why don't I take this guy? And I'm just going to rock it back and forth. What I often will use, hmm, I will often use something like this. Okay, thanks Stace. Um, this. And I'll just rock this back and forth like this. And wait till you see the difference. It's kind of sweet. So do you see what's happening so far? It's just getting softened. So I'll do it over here and over here. And then get rid of those edges and I really work that in and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this part up and that part up okay so I'm on that little bevel or that divot that I've created and now I'm going to roll just going to roll it to blend it and roll it to blend it can you see that now and then I would take a sponge or in lieu of a sponge, I have this. And I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture so that I can really blend that in. Oops. Sorry for the angle, guys. I guess I'm not showing you everything I'm doing, huh? But there. And then what that does is it just beefs up that inside a little bit. And then you can clean it up a little bit more. Just run that up. And then I'll wait until it's leather hard, or a little bit harder, and I can take a, a sponge in there. But see how that's just sweetened that up a little bit? Again, it's, it's reflecting the beefiness that's up here. Okay. So there, yes, I would then Hang it upside down, cover it. Okay, okay. I'm putting these guys away. 
No, we did one already. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. We have something that we have to finish. We didn't finish this other one. It's been hanging, right? On the side of my table. It's just been hanging like this. <sighs> oh, I, I wish I would have seen Andrea's. I'll, I will take a look. Okay, wait. So now, now I'm ready to attach the thing. So I tend to put my fingers, because I want to be able to get enough fingers in there. And I know that I have small hands, little small guys. So if this was a, a man holding it who was a larger guy, his fingers would be beefier too, right? So I'm going to put my, my fingers or my thumb in here just to spread that out a tiny bit more. As I bring it down, follow it so that I have a little bit of space here so that somebody with bigger hands can get in, okay? That's a patient mug. It waited so gracefully. It's a gracefully patient mug. Okay, so I already put a little bit of the magic water in. Let's put a little bit more. Just, we're going to attach it down here, okay? I don't have to scratch and score it. I can if I want. We'll see. So, that's all good. I'm going to hang this off of the edge, and I do that so that this end here isn't in my way. Two ways to do this. I can take, can you all see this? Tell me if you can see this. Can I do this? Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. How come I didn't do that earlier? Okay, so this, this area here of the a handle, I can lay it flat, kind of like this, right? Or I can cut, butt it and let it wrap around like this. See the difference? They'll give you a very different look. One will give you more of a D look or a, a C, a backward C look. And the other will give you more of a question markish look. Okay, so that is, I'm going to do the question markish. I don't, I'm not going to do a C. So I'm going to put my fingers in. Uh, let me see if I can move this around a bit so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to move it off of there just a little bit and I'm going to make certain it's in line, which it is. See what I've just done? And I'm going to lift it up now just a little. Now it's too close, isn't it? Oh, let's go back this way now. Oh, come on, Corey. There. So now I'm going to lift it up just a little bit, okay? To give me a little bit more space. There. From here, look at it. I'm going to run my finger just a little bit like this back and forth, and I'm going to support it on the inside, okay? I'm going to just support that on the inside. And I'm just running my finger. Uh, I'm toggling my finger like this, rocking it like that. Take that excess and snap it off uh, like that. Okay. Now, again, I'm just going to flatten that out a bit, spread it, make it look intentional. And with this one, so, so that's what it looks like right now. To me, that's not, that's not sweet yet. Okay. That's not quite lovely and finished yet. Game changer? Game changer? That's cool. Okay, so think about it. What isn't perfect about that? So I was told I can go a little bit, a little bit. I'm just going to maybe, okay, I'll finish fast and then we'll go there. So I want this to be sweeter. That's not sweet for me. So I'm taking my hand in water and I'm going to sweeten the deal, right? I'm going to do that thing again. I'm going to just... Just work that so that it's it's prettier. I just want it to be pretty. And I want it to be functional. And I want it to feel great in somebody's hand. So this is a little flat right here for me. So let me just widen that up a bit. And I'm going to lift it a little bit. 
remember it's clay right you can manipulate it a little bit now this part here I like it to come out a little bit so that this finger uh, ah, this finger can hold hang on to something so I just give it a little There we go. Dun, 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 dun. So it looks nice and beefy on the top. And I might add something still on the bottom here, inside or outside. But there you go. Okay. I'll leave that just like that. Okay, so now let's figure out how to get you over to uh, do a quick salt cellar. Yes, we're still on for salt cellars. Just take the time and and practice and and if it's not what you want make it what you want so don't settle for oh, I got the handle on it's great I did it if it if it's not lovely for you make it lovely take the time and really practice because I you know I'm not a rocket scientist I'm not a there's nothing special about me I didn't make pulled handles until I decided to make them and then it still, it didn't happen overnight. It took me, you know, make a hundred handles and I bet you by the 80th handle, you'll go, what, what, what did I wait all this time for? And it probably is before the 80th handle. I'm just saying. Okay. So, uh, let's move you guys over. I'm going to put you on a tripod now. So give us a second. Okay. That's going to come off. Oh, one second here. Okay, I don't think I need the power in there. Okay, so let's go uh, like that. Can you see the wheel? The wheel, here's the uh, There you go, okay. So. Uh, I'll take these. A couple of things here. So again, the actual piece looks like that um let's see if i can see your oh i'm bring you closer so i can see your comments more there we go so that's what it looks like right with that okay so and we're going to use uh everything every tool we have possible for us So when I center, sometimes it's harder to center a small piece of clay versus a large piece of clay. Um, these are, I don't even know, I just kind of ripped off some clay here. So um, one of the things that you want to do when you're, when you're centering is you want to be pushing the clay down. Imagine, you know, can you see what I'm doing here? I'm pushing down into the wheel head and that's bringing that clay up. And then I gently follow it up. Kind of neat. And if I haven't answered questions for you during this, I realize that I really didn't. Um, by all means, hit me up. Like, send me a note at Corey Sandler Pottery uh, on my on my uh, page, or or here. I'll try to answer them here. Okay. What I'm going to do now? I'm going to go right down to the bottom. Okay. Um, so right right down. I've hit the wheel head, and open it up a bit because we want the width, the opening, to be wider than the top of the funnel, okay? So, spread it open a little bit. Doesn't have to be too big. Can you see what's going on in there at all? I could raise this a bit, maybe. Well, just tell me if that's okay. How much is this? Oh, I have no idea, it's small. It's, it's that big, that much. Maybe a little bit less than that one. I don't know, maybe it's half a pound, something like that. They can be any size. You can, you can make these big, small, it doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to split this. 
in half, but I'm not going to go all the way down this time. And then this inside section, I'm going to do this, okay? Um, thanks, Stace. Okay, so here I go. This has to be just a small bit. I'm going to keep going down. My finger on my left hand is inside the wall. My finger on my right hand is outside that wall. Now I'm going to cut some of this because it's way too much clay. But I'm going to go down a bit more. And now let's cut some of this because it's more than we need. Okay. So now what I want, I'm going to spread that wide again in there. And now I'm going to collar and bring this little center into itself, but I don't want to close it up, okay? So just leave your finger right down on the wheel head and run on an angle. So my, my inside hand is like this, and I'm bringing my outside hand on an angle, okay? Try not to get water down there if you can help it. Just put a little bit on your finger. So right now, um, you can also use, I don't know what tool you might have, a pin tool, anything. I'm going to just spread that wider again at the bottom, just to tell it the angle that I want it to be, which is, it's going to do this kind of a thing, okay? Uh, like a little, a little uh, tent, or a little tree, a little Christmas tree. Now I'm collaring it in, bringing it in, bringing it in, bringing it in. Keep doing that. And just leave a small hole on the top. If the hole is too big on the top, you're going to end up with too much spice coming out or too much salt coming out, right? Um, these are these are kind of really interesting. They They do sell. Okay, that's done now. So take your needle tool, that means do a better. the other one's over there, but, and just clean that up on the inside. Because this is where the, the, um, this is what's gonna be on the outside of the pot, but on the underside. Okay, so I'm just kind of cleaning that, making it nice. And oh, I'm going to make it a tiny bit smaller. Now, because it's so small, it's hard to get the salt in there. So what you do is you, oh cool Debbie, um, is you need to use a toothpick to hold in and to keep going up and down on the inside of this once it's turned over to get the salt to go in. Otherwise it'll just get clogged. Okay, now is the fun part play. You decide what you want this to look like. It can be square, it can be round, it can be, once you've enclosed it, it's a vacuum, right? So you can do all kinds of stuff. So let's just get some height up here first. Now this doesn't need to be so tall. This can be a lot shorter, but we're going to make a tall one because we have, we have some clay we can do that with. But it's, that's, it can be very small in there. So I'm just going to continue to bring this over the top of that, make certain to, uh, I'll use this, to um, not allow a lot of moisture in there. So, ah! so um, make sure to use a sponge, wipe it down. I wouldn't recommend using this. <laughs> use a sponge. It's better. It's betterer. Betterest and betterer. Okay, let's get that back onto the trajectory. There we go. Okay. So again, you can shape this as you wish. You can make it as thin or as thick as you you are comfortable with. Okay, I'm going. I have a lot of room. I have about that much that much room before uh, from the top of the pyramid in there, or the tree, or the cylinder, or the. So let's bring this in, collar it in. 
one good way to collar is by having one finger inside and that just helps it to not spindle out of, out of the way as you're almost pulling it. So I'm kind of using that inside finger to pull up. I left that wide open, yeah, but I'm gonna close it now. Okay, you can use six points to close it. You can use five points and one finger inside. And I'm just slowly bringing that into itself. Slowly bringing it in. Get your finger underneath it, pull a little bit more. And I want to close this. Now, if I had enough clay, that I, I could use a knob right here, right? But let's just see if we're going to do that, if we're going to add something on. So I'm closing it now. It's closed. And at this point, what should we do? Uh, we should clean a rib. Really? Well, there you go, girl. So at this point, you can, you can play with the shape of this, right? Because there's a vacuum inside. So let's just, okay, for the next couple minutes, let's just play with shape. So let's make this straight here. Okay, and now I'm gonna round here. You can add some interest down here maybe. That's kind of sweet just like that, huh? But let's let's make this, let's change it up again. Let's add a bunch of different angles in here. Now, I'm getting resistance because it's a vacuum inside, right? No, the inside doesn't get glazed because um, I don't want anything to, uh, the hole is so small at the top of that pyramid that, or that cylinder, that I don't want to get glaze in it. I mean, you certainly could glaze it. It doesn't matter if you do. Um, just make certain you clean that hole so it's clear, okay? Um, so there's that. Let's keep playing. So remember, you can manipulate this any way you want. And because I don't have a hole on the top, it's, I'm able to reform it and change its shape, okay? So there is a, it's, it has the teepee inside, there's a hole, and then this is built around it. Cool, cool? Well, it doesn't need an air hole because, you know, it's not hermetically sealed on the bottom. And there is a hole inside of it. Did you get that? Like, it's, it's kind of cool. Okay, let's get rid of this. And let's change it up again. So, let, oops. Ah, there you go. That's what was inside of it. I just caught that on it. So what I would do after this would be made, I would, let's make another one. If you want to stick around, stick around for the other one. If you don't, it's completely fine. People need to go like pee and eat and make coffee and Oh, you're so welcome. Okay. Okay. So, very quickly, I'm going to center this up. I'm pushing down. And then I'm pulling over. And I'm pushing the clay down and then over. And I might have an air bubble in this one. We'll get it when we get it. Okay. So, what am I going to do? And it, you can make this big and wide. It can be this big if you want, right? It doesn't have to be so small. Okay. First, right down to the wheel head. Widen it out a bit. If you want, you can just leave it like that, or you can take a tool and make it really nice and neat in there. You know, if you have a nice, sharp 
flat edge, you can do that. I'm just using my finger and running my nail in. It's about that big inside, uh, that big inside, okay? Now, I'm gonna split this and that center piece, I'm going to turn into a pot all on its own, its own little pot, so to speak. So you see what's happening here? Now I'm gonna tighten that and bring this a little taller and smaller at the opening. So I want the opening to be quite small. And the, the salt, as long as the salt is gonna be from here to wherever the height is here, that's all it needs. So, you know, it doesn't get filled up because it would, it would flow over that hole, right? In terms of the, the engineering of this, so to speak. Okay, now I'm gonna bring it in a bit and make that hole, that hole smaller opening. There we go. That should be just fine. So now this area, this is the pot. So do with it as you wish, right? Time for vino, okay. So I'm going to just bring this right up and over that opening that I've made. And then I'm gonna enclose this, which will then give you all kinds of options to be able to make whatever shape you want out of the clay that surrounds the cylinder. So this one has more clay than that last one, so it's gonna be taller. Yeah. <laughs> so this one, let's, let's actually use the clay on the top to make something interesting, okay? So I have lots of clay there. Okay, so now that's our top. And you can do whatever you want with that. You can, you know. You don't have to do it in two pieces if you don't want to, or you could do something interesting and hand-built there. I don't have a sponge anymore. My sponge is on the table. Okay. So let's just take a rib, clean some of that slip out of there. The top is absolutely sealed. The inside is not sealed, right? Because there's a piece inside, like another pot inside of a pot, and it's not sealed. And uh, that is what you would turn it upside down, put the salt in, turn it back over. It sits in that well between the, the interior funnel and this exterior here, okay? Let's just go like that and let's go like that. So I'm just playing at this point, right? Let's, uh, let's not play so much. Let's get this done. You know, make it smooth if you want to decorate it. Add texture if you want your glaze to be, to do it. How about we just do this? How's that? No, that's not nice. But because it has the vacuum, you can do whatever you want. Okay. How about something like this? There. Okay. 
So then you would take your knife. Okay, done guys. And she's finished. I'll lift it up and you'll just see the bottom and then put it in a chuck, trim it if you wish. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me. That's the inside. There you go. So you just trim that up and then you're, you're done. Okay, everybody. See ya, see ya, see ya in some other post. Love it all. Thanks so much, Stace. Thanks so much, Tim. Thanks so much, everybody.